last day of bird season, January 1st, New Year's Day. My plan was to get up at 5.30, but I ended up getting up around 10.45 and leaving by noon. Pretty much cut my day in half, but the good thing is we're above freezing now, so I won't be battling uh, painful, numb fingers for the first 20 minutes before my circulation kicks into gear. I'm returning to a spot uh, where I hunted last time and was actually able to find some huns. Uh, got some shots off too. Um, this spot where I'm going to is heavily used by at least one covey. And I was able to flush them seven times. Uh, the problem is these birds do not hold. They were flushing uh, 50 to 100 yards out in front of me, so um, only one time was I able to play the wind and come up over a rise um, and flush some at my feet, but I blew a triple misser. All right, here we go again. I've got four hours of light and about a square mile of BLM land to cover. I'm running the Winchester Super X six and a half steel shot. Seems to cycle pretty well out of my Ithaca pump action. The nice thing about these half day hunts is I can pretty much film all day long with my GoPro. So it's guaranteed I won't miss any flushes that is if I remember to hit the straight hit the screen every 15 or so minutes to uh so the hindsight doesn't time out on me. Pretty sure I'm looking at hun tracks right now. Yeah. They like these juniper trees. I got one! I got one, yeah! Freaking seven minutes in, already on the board. Man, that was a close covey rise. Right in this gully, where I, literally 50 yards where I found him last time. Man, seven minutes in, already on the board. Incredible. Thought I was about to blow another triple mister there, but luckily on that third shot, got a piece of one. Definitely not great shooting on my part. Any experienced upland hunter would have gotten a triple there. But super stoked to get my first hunt. Seven minutes in. New Year's Day, last day of the season. This has to be the fifth or sixth time I've gone out after these birds. They are so tough to find this part of the state. But this area right here is a true gem. Two for two at the spot finding coveys anyway all right time to find where the rest of them birds went better load up first haven't had a single jam with these shells 
usually when I'm running Kent or whatever the other shells I use, the first shot is always a jam. And it's costed me many a bird. So what I'm doing now is just hopscotching from juniper tree to juniper tree, which is most likely where I'll pick them up again. These birds like to fly a lot more than quail. Not quite as far as chucker. And the terrain is definitely a lot milder. So, these two clumps of cover out in front of me are two very likely holding areas and I want to make sure to approach from above so if they flush too far out in front of me, at least I can get a good idea of where they settle down. Because if they go over a rise like they did last time, it's all guesswork and picking them up again. Okay, next I'm gonna check this gully out in front of me and then I'm gonna run out of BLM land. Definitely not the whitest of coats. I've seen them when they're pure white out here, even with minimal snow cover. But one or two more of these and I'll have the makings for a fine hat. And this thing is about 10 pounds, so I'm gonna have to carry them back to the truck before I keep looking for Huns. Hopefully the pelt isn't too damaged from that shot I took. I know I hit him pretty square on in the hind quarter. Gotta put this thing inside so the hawks don't get to it. While I'm here, I'm gonna do a, uh, a crop check on that one hun I got. See what they're on. My guess is it's gonna be mostly juniper berries, but we'll find out. So I'm gonna open up the crop and see what this joker's been eating. Don't feel juniper berries. Seems more like leafy greens.
Yeah. Zero percent juniper berries, that's interesting. Just fresh leafy greens and some weed heads. No seeds or anything. Mild delay there, dropping off my rabbit. Taking that absolute killer thumbnail pick and doing the crop check on that hun. Cut into my hunting time a little bit, but I've got an hour and 40 minutes of light left. So I'm thinking if I get into birds, it's gonna be a different covey because I follow, I knew the direction that first covey went and I followed it all the way until I ran out of BLM land. But right up this gully is some prime cover with lots of sign. So fingers crossed. Lots of little hun tracks. This spring here is what draws these birds to this area. Yeah, we might be fixing to have a flush here. Got another. Let's see where they go. Up there. Whew. Wow, staggered flush. Never seen that. is incredible. A true gem. Got to admit that first shot was a flock shot. And then those two later shots uh, were slightly out of range, I believe.
good idea of where those ones are going. That was totally another flock shot because they were out of range. Could have unloaded my mag, but that would have been to no avail. not end up relocating that last covey but got two birds down and considering the fact I wasn't expecting to get any I'd say that's pretty good that's 10 covey rises out of this single spot in the last two evenings I've been out so as far as I know this is gonna be the first Southwest Montana Hungarian partridge hunt on YouTube. So, uh, hopefully it'll rank high on the search results. Same with the pheasant hunting video I put out. This part of the state is much more widely known for its elk and deer hunting. Um, so all I really had to go off of when looking for spots to hunt these birds was, um, largely the distribution map put out by the FWP and just driving around being on the lookout for suitable habitat obviously a map and gps is crucial to locate that public ground um but i just find it highly rewarding to get out there put in the extra effort find those hidden gems and ultimately have success in largely unproductive areas so Stoked to have found this spot. <coughs> Can't wait to hit it up next season. Hopefully when it's warmer. And yeah, thanks for watching this video. We'll catch you in the next one.